Hi guys, Chris here. Yes, VBA data transfer is something we do all the time on our Excel development projects. And personally for me, once I learned how to do these data transfer techniques, I was able to get involved in bigger and better projects. And in this two video series, this is part two. I'm showing you the exact techniques that I use on these projects to transfer data instantly from one Excel file to another, saving you a huge amount of time money and stress and solving that nagging question there must be a better way to do that yes there is with these techniques let's get into part two let's go so we're moving data across files with excel vba let's get into some intermediate and advanced techniques in this session. So intermediate techniques first, we're gonna cover transferring multiple cells across workbooks. We're gonna cover using a loop to do this operation and a condition so you only take particular cells and you ignore other cells. Firstly, multiple cells. So how do you transfer a range of cells? Well, this is fairly straightforward. And as always, we're bearing in mind our foundational concept, which is destination equals origin and I've recycled some code here. So what are we going to try to do? We're going to try to copy Chris's set list to the destination file. Remember, we're talking about the Oasis uh, comeback gig set list here. So this is my predicted set list and we're going to try to copy this from file one uh, into file two. And specifically, we want to put it on the set list sheet in file two and i'm going to go ahead and clear this area and i'm just going to note the range here so it starts at c9 and it ends at c28 so i can just put those references in so c9 to c28 dot value we do need that, that dot value equals the first file so i can see one there this is our origin file sheets intermediate and then what's the range going to be so there's a lot of switching between files of course when we're doing uh, this kind of job but the range is c18 to c37 here okay so i've gone ahead put those ranges in you can do your usual checks now what might go wrong syntax spelling but don't worry too much about that i would say go ahead give it a go and then if it's not working, um, you can, you know, take some feedback from those error messages. And as we, did, as we did in the first video, you can go ahead and fix those. So I've just clicked in the macro. I can see the cursor running. I've clicked the play button. So back over to our destination file and I can see our set list in there. So let's go ahead and prove that, clear it again. Clicked into the macro, going to click play and we can see the set list coming in there. So it doesn't just have to be a single cell. You can transfer a range of cells. But what if you wanted to transfer multiple cells, but those cells weren't what's called contiguous? Those cells are in multiple places. They're not in a nice single block. How would you do that? Well, let's suppose we want to transfer the first slot, first song of my predicted set list and the last song of my predicted set, set list. So how would you do that? Well, you have to do it using two commands, two separate commands. And you can see we've got our first song here. So this is the same concept, the same syntax. So it's destination uh, equals origin. I'm going to go ahead once again, recycle that code. So the first song is going to go into uh, E9. This is the destination cell reference. The second song is going to go into the last song rather is going to go into e12 and then what's the origin uh, cell so back to our first workbook and the first song is in cell c uh the last song rather is in cell c37 here so once again i know those cells are clear in the destination file we've got a button here to transfer the first and last cell i'm going to click that button back over to our destination file and ah, we got the first one, but we didn't get the second one. OK, that's because I didn't update this cell reference. So let's go back uh, to the origin file. So the cell reference should be for the last song should be C37. Why did I get, get that wrong? Going to have to go and watch the action replay there. C37. Right. Let's just run it from the VBA editor this time. You can run all these macros from the VBA editor or most of them are attached to buttons in the download file. So I've run the macro back to our destination file. I can see still haven't got the last song there. So what's happened? Ah, this is just classic. And I always keep this in the videos because um, it's just me 
messing up but you know i could say it's because i'm recording but to be honest when i do this in the real world this does happen quite a lot and there we go so I've finally got the correct sy syntax in so destination e12 is the reference equals origin c37 is the reference there and you can see multiple commands one command per cell you can transfer as much data as you want but you might think chris that's going to create a lot of syntax it's going to create a lot of code absolutely stick with me because the last technique the pro level technique that i actually use gets rid of so much of that code if you can get your head around it it's mind-blowingly powerful we're gonna go through that in just a couple of minutes okay next challenge is you're saying well chris with my data set, I don't know how big the data set is. Yeah, it could be three rows, it could be three, 300 rows. So many data sets are like that these days, aren't they? They're dynamic, rows being added, deleted. So we would need a dynamic range definition. And this is our um, next challenge, transfer with dynamic range definition. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna use a line of code and a variable to dynamically define the range that we're going to transfer here and specifically we want to copy the selected set list so for example if i choose lunar here i'm going to choose a lunar set list that's going to be copied into the destination file into that set list area so you might want to stop the video what ideas have you got for how you might do this and what vba techniques many of which well we've covered this vba technique so many times on the channel over the years what vba techniques might helpful be a really good exercise to stop the video and try to do it yourself here right uh, the concepts we're going to use is range, 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 and the variable we're going to use is this variable here. Right, set list offset is stored in the engine. So I love this because it's fish and chips. It's a combination, two things working beautifully together in synergy. In this case, we've got a mechanism in the engine which takes the value that's the set list, the chosen set list, and tells me the offset here. So I'm going to take that offset store it into a variable which is this line of code here and this is another application of a equals b destination equals origin in this case we're storing a value into the variable here now i can now use that value with the range 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 construct to get myself to the correct range is it chris's set list is it steve's is it luna's set list okay and offset is going to come in at some point of course right so let's say um so the start point is going to be um so let's start from here so b17 uh b17 dot offset and we want to go one row down because one row down is the row that contains the first song in the set list how many cells do we want to go across though hmm stop the video have a think about that this is where the magic of offset working with a variable comes in so i can use that set list offset variable that's going to move across because of the mechanism in the engine uh, according to the selected set list so this is our starting point and then our end point is going to be i'm going to recycle this syntax once again I'm going to use the underscore to allow me to continue on a new line and then how many cells do we want to go down our anchor point is b17 that's where we're starting from how many rows do we want to go down 20 rows here so if i type in 20 here then i know just from experience really that we're going to need a second bracket i can then take the address property this is going to give me an address it's going to give me a reference and that's what we've been using previously we've been using cell references it's just in this case that cell reference we've kind of generated our cell generated it ourselves and we're storing it into a variable and this is where hopefully some magic is going to happen what i'm going to do is i'm going to put going to put a stopping point in the vba editor which means vba is going to run to this point i'm going to hit play and i just want to know what this set list range what's going into that variable it says e18 to e 37 is that accurate so lunar set list starts on e18 and it goes to e37 let's try my set list i'm going to stop this macro i'm going to play it again play it once more and set list range is now just hovering over this variable here c18 to c37 that's a lovely little mechanism going to get the job done for us so i can now remove these stopping points and chris is selected 
Let's change it to Steve. Yes, my brother. We've been chatting about Oasis. Definitely agree that they're a great band. Let's go. So go into the destination file. I just triggered the macro from the VBA editor and I can see uh, hopefully this is Steve's set list. Is it? Doesn't quite seem right. OK, what's happening here? What's happening? Let's go ahead and play this again. Going to hit the F5 key. Let's go to our uh, destination file. Ah, yeah, there it is. So I'm going to hit play. And oh, it's got a debug. Uh, subscript out of range. OK, yeah, that was an interesting point because um, it isn't the active workbook. Um, Excel has returned an error there, subscript out of range. So I can use this workbook.sheets. This workbook is a really useful piece of syntax because it means the workbook where this code lives. All of this code lives in workbook one, lives in the origin workbook. So that's a good illustration of where this workbook would be useful. Can I hit play now? Still got subscripts out of range. OK, once again, we need this workbook here too. OK, always keep this stuff in the video because being able that meta skill of being able to work through problems is really helpful. So does Steve's set list start with rock and roll start? It does. Let's change it to Luna's set list, which starts with go let it out. I'm going to trigger the macro this time from the workbook. And is our selected set list being copied across? Yes, it is. OK, so we've covered how to copy ranges across, how to copy different blocks of cells across. Now how to dynamically define a range. We've done that with offset. I've also included this example here, which I'm not going to talk through, but you can use a loop. You can use a loop to do this data transfer, and that gives you an additional benefit of looking at each piece of data individually, and you can decide, do I want to transfer this piece of data? And in this case, I'm only transferring, I'm only transferring songs that have a single word title. Yeah, you probably wouldn't want to do that in the real world, would you? It's a little bit contrived, but it's a good example of how you can use a conditional statement to bring in exactly what you want to do by looping through the data. Now, if you've never seen a loop in Excel VBA, there's a link in the video description below to our beginner course that has a whole session on loops. Incredibly powerful. OK, let's move on to the actual mechanism that I use. You might say, Chris, why do you need anything else apart from these mechanisms? I agree. These are great mechanisms, but mechanisms. But what I've found is if you're transferring a lot of data, you end up with a lot of code in the VBA editor. That can be difficult to edit. So what I suggest you do is use what I'd call, go into the Pro tab now, a data transfer table here, a data transfer table. OK, what's this going to do? I'm going to go ahead and click the transfer button in a second. But first, I'm going to go to the destination file. Just going to clear all of the inputs here and we're going to hit transfer. We're going to see some data going in. Now, can you stop the video and guess what's going to happen here? Let me quickly talk you through what's going on. So we've got a loop here. What's that loop doing? That loop is looping through this table here. So what's the significance of this table? The magic here is we can manually input, if you like, each of the data transfers we want. We can input them one by one. We're actually inputting the destination details to the spreadsheet. We're inputting the origin details to the spreadsheet. And I've got this detail column on the end here. Now, this is cool because it gives us total control of the data transfer from the table in the worksheet. So I'm going to go ahead, hit transfer here. And if we go to our destination word, but we can see Columbia has gone in. So something has been transferred. So that's one transfer. Suppose we wanted to do one more transfer here. I'm going to go control C and control V. So I'm going to recycle some text in this case. So we've got the first song going in. Suppose we wanted the last song to go in. What's the destination reference? So the first song is in E9. The last song is in E12. So I can go ahead and type that in. It's the same worksheet, so that's OK. The file name is the same. We're using two files. You could be using multiple files, multiple worksheets here. I use this exact mechanism to control very complex data transfers really easily. So where's the origin cell? The origin cell for the first song. Uh, so let's go back to our origin workbook, which we're currently in, of course, and let's take it from C18. So the intermediate sheet C18 is the first song. We're doing the last song, aren't we? OK, so let's go ahead. It's C37. 
I think it is from memory. Let's go back to the intermediate sheet and I can see, yes, rose C37 contains that last cell. So what are we expecting to happen? All we've done is, all we've done is inputted some more data into a workbook. So how does that create another data transfer? Well, this information is going into these variables and you can see this line of code here, it contains six variables, but there's three variables for the origin, three variables for the destination, all the information coming from the worksheet here. So I'm going to hit transfer. What are we expecting to see? We're expecting to see that last song coming in and that's it. So I'd really, really take the time to play with this. Seriously, if you get this working, you won't use another data transfer mechanism ever for VBA in your career. This is incredibly powerful. I've used it over the years on so many customer projects. I've been using it this week on a customer project. So this is my professional level solution for VBA data transfer across files. Thank you so much for watching this video series. I hope it helps you, your colleagues, your team get more out of Excel VBA. Any questions at all, leave those in the comments. I'll get back to you there. The next video to watch is right here.